Hi, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Jeb Butler. I'm the director of operations at the Wharton School. Um, we're really excited that you're able to join us. Um, I know it's a little bit odd to have an information session solely broadcast right now. Um, unfortunately, we aren't able to hold uh, anything at school at the moment, but you know we're doing the best we can and we're really happy that you could join us. I hope you're all comfortable and safe and healthy. Um, over the next hour, I'm going to be going through a lot of information. Certainly, there'll be some time to ask questions. You can um, use the question box. I'll do my best to get to questions, but I do want to keep to a one-hour time limit. Additionally, I'm going to be giving you some resources that should help you um, answer any questions along the way. And as always, the Wharton admissions team is always here. All right, we're going to go ahead and dive in. Um, if you need to leave at any point, no problem. Feel free. Uh, this is a pretty free-flowing um, uh, free flowing session. Uh, so like I said, the goal of this session is to provide a deeper dive in what is available on our website. Um, as I'm going through this information session, I really want you to ask yourself, is Wharton a place where I can see myself for two years and then as a member of the entire community after I graduate? We want to help you have a deeper understanding of the Wharton MBA program and really dispel any myths about the Wharton community. Uh, I hope that sounds good to all of you. Um, and uh, like I said, if you have any questions, let us know along the way. Uh, but otherwise, let's let's dive in. And I apologize in advance if there are any tech issues or my dog barking in the background. I am giving this from home. All right. So the Wharton MBA program. So I think it's important to really think about Wharton's guiding principles. Uh, Overall, we're a big place with a clear mission. The power of Wharton comes from these three things, incubating ideas, creating leaders, and driving insights. We think about, we think big and we focus on the future. Um, really, we're going to prepare you with the ability to adapt in an ever-changing business world. All of the things we cover during today's session will touch on the power of Wharton, you know, our approach to teaching, our community, and, and what you'll gain through the MBA. Uh, just a couple of basics. Um, so uh, a little bit about our community and, and who we are. Um, Wharton lives in the heart of a city known for its first. We were the first business school in the United States, founded in, in 1881. We enrolled our first MBA class in 1921. Uh, we are the second largest MBA program with about 864 people in each class. Um, overall, we really celebrate our diversity, uh, different backgrounds, experience, and perspectives. Um, good thing to know, um, we in the last incoming class, we had 47% female, something we were particularly proud of. Um, and additionally, we have a, a pretty diverse student body with 39 states, 144 different countries represented. Um, it's really important for us to have a diverse number of people coming in every year. Um, and that's something that we strive for in this, this incoming year will be no exception as well. So today we're going to cover five main topics. We're going to go through academics leadership, career management, student life, and then finally, what, what I'm sure many of you are curious about, uh, the Wharton MBA application. Um, so let's begin with academics, okay? Um, Wharton MBA academics set us apart from our peer schools because of our flexible approach to learning. Uh, as I go through this section, I'm going to be talking about our flexible core curriculum and academic offerings and your ability to choose your own academic path and tailor it to your career goals. So your class at Wharton. Um, so, so what's a classroom without students in the seats? Um, the way we structure our class is pretty vital to our academic approach. Uh, we know Wharton is a big place. 864 people is a lot of people. Um, but we are mindful about making each class feel like a small community. So your class is made up of 864 of the world's most promising innovators, big thinkers, and leaders. Um, but we don't stop there. Um, we want to make sure that you have time for, for making friends and, and uh, colleagues in, in smaller uh, situations. So for that reason, each class is divided into four clusters of 216. Your cluster is kind of like your extended Wharton family. That's where you're going to start building the community process um, through things like, you know, cluster cup, cluster dinners, and other social events. It's a little less intimidating than trying to make friends with 863 other people. Um, each cluster is then broken into the cohorts of 72 students. It's at the cluster level, I'm sorry, at the cohort level that you'll take your first core courses at Wharton. So your 71 other classmates will be with you in your first core courses in the Wharton School. Um, everything that we do at Wharton revolves around teamwork. 
So from your cohort, you're broken into, broken into learning teams of six people, right? Teamwork is a core competency of the MBA experience. So your learning team of six students serves as your laboratory to hone your teamwork skills and to, be, to begin to develop your leadership style. Um, so we do, again, we do understand that 864 people is pretty big, but we're really intentional, uh, intentional about breaking you into smaller micro communities that will allow you to thrive and meet as many people as possible. And at the center of all of that is you. Um, again, we, we know it's a, a large class, but we certainly do take an individual approach to, to your whole experience at Wharton. Um, and the customizable nature of our program from academics to everything else is something that really allows you to build a program that makes sense for you and feel like an individual amongst a large group. So our curriculum, um, a couple of things. Um, I mentioned earlier that Wharton has a pretty flexible approach to learning. Um, our curriculum is broken into these three categories, nine and a half credits to fulfill the core curriculum, five credits to fulfill your major requirements, and four and a half credits of electives. Um, these add up to 19 credits required to graduate from the program. That said, however, your tu tuition covers 21 credits. A lot of our students use those two credits outside of work, picking up classes across the University of Pennsylvania and truly reflecting the, um, I would say, the interdisciplinary nature of the Wharton program. So let's dig into our core curriculum first. Our core curriculum is broken into two buckets, the fixed core on one hand and the flexible core on the other. Your core curriculum starts with the fixed core. In the first semester of your first year, these six required courses are the foundation to your entire business education. You'll take these courses with your cohort, the 71 other classmates that I described when I was going through the concentric circles. Um, the remainder of your core curriculum is flexible. Uh, you select your courses across eight different business topics and they provide the breadth of knowledge and the ability to tap into your own interests and learning goals. Uh, you can spread these courses out over the rest of your two years. You don't have to finish them just in your first year. We designed this to allow students to front load with more electives to prepare for your summer internship, a business venture, or another global experience. Um, then we move into your major. Um, an MBA major is a big differentiator for Wharton. You know, some of our peer schools don't offer the option to declare a major. We believe this gives our students the level of expertise in a specific area that makes them attractive candidates for employers. Um, you will have uh, 19 different majors to choose from and five credits to fulfill the major of your choice. A lot of our courses actually count toward more than one major, giving you the option to double major, which half of our students actually do. Um, moving on to our next slide. Um, looking at the, the electives um, uh, being listed on the, on the side of the screen, um, you know, we know our core curriculum provides the foundation and, and the breadth of knowledge uh, that you're looking for, but our electives offer the depth to help you maximize your learning. Um, each year, Wharton offers nearly 200 electives across 10 academic departments. Um, some electives will count toward your major, but you'll have room to take some uh, chances and explore some different new topics. Um, while the electives are industry or function specific, we also have courses on broader leadership ideas. You know, as you can see, there are a lot to choose from. Some courses to consider are things like advanced negotiation, communication for entrepreneurs, digital marketing and social media, um, things like that. Um, you might even be interested in a course on FinTech and blockchain. We offer those as well. Um, you can view the full list of electives on our website, website, and that'll show the actual courses available to our students each semester. So we have a couple of integrated programs. We offer some unique variations to the standard MBA throughout our integrated program options. The Lauder MBA MA is the first joint degree program in international management. Uh, your MBA curriculum will be integrated with advanced language study, immersive travel, and focus on one of our six global regions. Uh, the JD MBA program incorporates curriculum from Penn Law and Wharton to allow students to earn the, both the JD and the MBA in three years, rather than the five years it would typically take to complete each program individually. Um, uh, healthcare management is also one of our 19 majors, uh, but here's the, the, the special thing about uh, the healthcare management program. Um, students have to choose it at the time of application. We do select that as a cohort. People can't switch into healthcare management major once they arrive at Wharton. They have to do that preemptively. Um, again, it integrates academic and professional development, helping students to obtain positions in all parts of the healthcare sector. Um, so again, make sure that any, any of you who are interested in healthcare management major you select that coming in because, again, you're reviewed as a cohort. Um, this is just another way that, that Wharton uh, really affirms for our students the importance of interdisciplinary learning. 
Again, if you don't have time to do a joint degree, do keep in mind you have those extra classes that are built into the credit structure that allows you to take classes at any other graduate school at Penn. Um, just a couple of student snapshots for you. Um, so we've reviewed the curriculum. Let's take a look at how kind of this is broken down for a couple of different people. Okay, so let's look at Jalice here. All right, so she was an entrepreneurship and innovation student. Uh, you can see she had her nine her nine credits from from the core curriculum. Um, and then to to kind of uh, you know make sure that she was uh, was getting um, you know a, a decent amount of experience academically, she, you can see she took one non Wharton class, some operations logistics. She even took a healthcare management class. Um, good thing to note. Even if you're not a healthcare management major, um, some students can take classes in healthcare management. Some of those electives. Um, and she also broke it down between marketing and management. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other people as well and kind of how their credits broke down just so you can see how individualized uh, the student experience from an academic standpoint can be for a working student. So this is Sean. Um, he did management as a major. You can see again the common thread is going to be uh, the core curriculum and then he, he did his five management major classes and then he took a, a, a smattering of other things as well. Um, Nicole was one of our Lauder students, uh, so 10 and a half from Lauder, seven for core, and then some other things that she might have been interested in otherwise. Um, the main thing is, in addition to your core and your major, you can get a well-balanced education that allows you to not only be prepared for your future endeavors, but also really explore some areas that you may not have been interested in, in before. And then uh, Hallie was clearly very focused. She was a finance major, she did her core, and she did management and finance. Really, there are so many different ways to go about it and the different permutations of the different classes you can take really depend on your interests as a student. Something that's very important to us is, uh, is uh, global opportunities. You know, while the majority of your courses are going to take place on campus in Philadelphia, we really encourage our students to gain global perspectives by participating in off-campus and global learning opportunities. Um, just to name a couple, um, we do have a semester in San Francisco. Um, it's an application-based program that has about 70 students um, in the spring of your first year or fall of your second year. Um, it's a customizable curriculum. It really explores entrepreneurship, tech, and innovation with a really, uh, I would say, really narrowed focus on the regional economy of the Bay Area. Um, we also offer a couple of different international programs. Um, just to, to highlight one of them, talking about our global modular courses. Uh, these are topic-focused electives that explore industries in global cities, right? So courses are an intensive three to seven day workshop format conducted over spring breaks. So just um, to give you an idea of what some people are exploring and where, um, you know, there are things like uh, healthcare challenges in Ethiopia, people looking at global supply chain in China, marketing to the Indian consumer, lessons from Israeli innovation. So a lot of different ways to integrate, um, I would say programming beyond Philadelphia. It's really important for a lot of our students to make sure they have international experience because a lot of them do intend to work abroad upon graduation. These are just a couple of ways to go about it. So leadership is something that's, uh, I would say, a trademark of any good MBA program. Certainly the Wharton School is no exception. Your two years of business school are the perfect opportunity for you to develop your leadership skills. You know, whether you're coming to business as really a tried and true tested leader, or whether you're looking to develop and polish your leadership skills, Wharton can teach you how to be an effective leader. Um, we're going to give you the opportunity to test and reflect and learn and apply all the intellectual foundations of leadership, not only in the classroom, but also, but also outside of the classroom as well. So uh, something that we're uh, really proud of is our McNulty Leadership Program. Um, at, at the Wharton School, the McNulty Leadership Program is home to over 30 leadership development opportunities at Wharton. We understand that people coming in are at different places with leadership, and that's okay. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to curate and cultivate yourself as a leader as you see fit. So you're going to begin your leadership journey by asking yourself a big question. What kind of leader do you want to be? And then through McNulty's programs, you're going to be able to answer that question and gain the skills to be a responsible leader in your own organization someday. Um, some of McNulty's most popular leadership opportunities are the expeditions, intensives, and workshops. These are stretch experiences that take you out of your comfort zone and really test your leadership skills in, in meaningful and substantive ways. Expeditions are, are outdoor experiential based treks that provide moments of, uh, we like to say, uncertainty and challenge. Uh, these range from six to 14 days and tend to be really high in physical intensity. Um, intensives are group experiences uh, that place you in environments of uncertainty or challenge. Um, and if you prefer to stay closer to home, you know, maybe you're not ready for that Antarctica trek. 
or, um, or you know, uh, doing some Andes mountaineering. Um, you know, we do offer the intensives and workshops that, that range from one to three days, like the FTNY fire simulation, the Quantico intensive, et cetera. So a lot of different ways to kind of stretch yourself during the two years that you're at Wharton that will give you some great leadership focus for the next, next phase of your career and beyond. Something that a lot of our students really respond well to is our executive coaching. So leadership development, we find, is a really personal experience, and that, that should involve a lot of reflection and self-awareness. Um, Wharton provides every single MBA student with an executive coach in our executive coaching and feedback program. Your coach is going to work with you to complete a 360 self and peer assessment. From there, you're going to set goals together, walk through personalized coaching, and create a development plan that integrates your personal values and strengths. So something that our students find really valuable is this program because having that one-on-one -on -one opportunity really to kind of step outside of yourself as a leader and look at yourself moving forward is really vital to our students' growth. And, and most of our students do take advantage of this. So something important about career management, um, MBAs certainly are in high demand because they create immediate and sustainable value in organizations. And, and the Wharton School is no exception to that. Um, our career management team is dedicated to connecting our students with a wide range of different employers. Um, for the class of 2018, 98.4% um, of our students seeking a job reported a full-time offer from 749 different employers. So let's go ahead and talk about and explore some of the ways that career management staff supports our students in taking on these roles post-Warden. So uh, career support at Wharton is something that is incredibly, um, I would say incredibly well fleshed out. Our, our, our staff does a fantastic job. Um, and, and career support is um, through our, our career management office is provided in two ways, okay? First, we partner you with industry specific career advisors for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, these advisors work with our students to clarify career goals, to map out their job search process, and to provide advice and resources that our students need to optimize their candidacy during the search process. On the other side of the house, our employer relationship team works directly with employers to make company connections for our Wharton students. Um, they help companies plan their recruitment efforts, they establish a really strong brand among Wharton students and put policies in place to make the recruiting process a little bit easier for our students to navigate. So really from, from either side of it, you know, the internal one-on-one -on -one advising to the external employer relationships, um, the Wharton Career Services team has your best interests in mind. Um, so our advisors specialize in 30 industry pathways. Each of them has a specific action plan around timing and process for recruiting. So as you can see, uh, we have a lot of different ways to organize our students based on their post-Wharton interests. Um, additionally, most of the industries that you see listed on this slide have a dedicated student-run professional club. Um, so there's a really great, great compliment there to make to make industry connections for students who either worked in the industry or interested in before Wharton or interested in going into that industry after Wharton. Um, advisors work really closely with these industry clubs to create and deliver really great career education content to bring in industry leaders to campus for speaking engagements and to plan our conferences. So the recruiting process. Um, at Wharton, we've put some definition around the two most common scenarios for the way that recruiting happens. So on, on, on the left side of the screen, you'll see something called mature recruiting. It's more structured and efficient as companies have more of a steady annual demand to fill roles, right? There's an established process for when companies visit campus, calendars and deadlines for recruitment are, are pretty well structured, and it's more of a condensed timeline. These are industries more like consulting, iBanking, investment management, consumer goods, big, big tech, et cetera. Enterprise recruitment on the other side of that is a little bit different. These companies tend to have inconsistent demand to fill roles and are more just-in-time hiring, right? So these are more uh, places like private equity, media, social impact, people going into startups, things like that. A lot of industries straddle between mature and enterprise, and advisors will work with you um, on, your, on your personalized recruiting strategy, just depending on what your goals are. So internship recruiting um, is, is pretty important to a lot of our students. So, you know, they want to make sure that, um, that our students are, are getting internships and, um, you know, something that our students are looking at as soon as they get in. Um, you know, we want to make sure that you have the information before you would arrive. So we get a lot of questions about what it looks like to recruit for an internship in your first year. Uh, this just gives you a snapshot of the recruiting timeline. So your first few months at Wharton, you're going to be spending that building your recruitment competency. You're going to work with your advisor on creating your company target list, doing resume building, interview techniques, and, and a couple of more other really vital, vital things. Then 
In early January, there's a two week period where mature companies will hold their interviews and make offers soon thereafter. So that's a really focused recruiting period on campus. And then for students um, targeting roles in enterprise industries, their timeline tends to begin in late January and last well into the spring before securing their internships. It is good to know that for the class of 2019, 91% of the class sought an internship and 100% of them secured an internship. So certainly um, our, our recruiting process works. And as long as our students are working well with, with career services, they're, they're in great positions to land internships. Um, so Wharton has the highest job placement rate among MBA programs, which we're incredibly proud of, of course. Um, here's a snapshot of all the companies that hired two or more members of the class of 2018. This is just some of the companies that, that hired Wharton graduates, not all of them, just these are companies that hired two or more of our alums. Um, some of our students choose not to recruit for a job and instead spend time working on their own venture. Um, just, just to give you some info, 35 students in the class of 2018 started their own company while pursuing the Wharton MBA. Uh, these students used the resources offered through the Penn Wharton Entrepreneurship Center to turn their ideas into scalable and sustainable businesses. Resources available to our students include 36 different funds, a lot of contests, incubators, accelerators, access to experts, and over $600,000 in awards every year. Um, an exciting piece of news to share is the development of Tangan Hall, which is going to be the new home for Penn Wharton Entrepreneurship. It's opening this fall. Uh, this space is going to have a lot of different uh, different things for our budding entrepreneurs at, at Penn and specifically at Wharton, including a venture lab, um, some test kitchens, a street level pop up retail storefront um, for student ventures, a virtual reality environment, and a lot more. So our students interested in entrepreneurship, um, especially as we move into the next phase of it at, at Penn, it's going to be an exciting time to be on campus. Here are just a couple of examples of some Wharton MBA startups. These companies shown here were all founded by Wharton alumni. Some were even founded during their time here as MBA students. Um, and these people use resources from the Penn Wharton Entrepreneurship. Now, some of these are certainly, um, I would say, very immediately recognizable, you know, General Assembly, uh, Warby Parker, et cetera. Um, but really, if, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, Penn is a fantastic place to be. And we're really excited for our students who are, are starting their own ventures and we're happy to support them. Um, so a little bit about student life at the Wharton School. Um, student life is really the heart of the Wharton MBA program. Your engagement within our community is really how you learn outside the classroom. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get involved. Often it's really hard for our students to choose. Um, there's a team of advisors within the Office of Student Life that help you really assess your goals and resist the temptation to do too much just because there is so much at your disposal. Um, they're going to help you customize a student life experience that allows you to strike a great balance while you're at Wharton. So clubs and conferences of Wharton are, are one of the best ways to work on your leadership and teamwork skills outside of the classroom, while also really having a lot of fun with people who have similar interests to you. So also a great way to explore things that you might not have had the opportunity to, under, to explore maybe as an undergrad or, or as a working professional. Um, Wharton really is a club to match almost every interest. Clubs are created by students, and if you have an idea for a new club, you can create it. Uh, it's a really wonderful way for our students to ensure that their interests are, are, are represented. Um, Wharton has a very student-driven culture, and clubs and conferences are some of the best examples of that. Um, really, our commitment to our students is to create a cohesive, connected Wharton community. It's something that we find to be really vital. Each of your clusters is assigned a student life advisor who will help you make meaningful connections in your class. Let's say, for example, you're more of an introverted person. Uh, they'll connect you with a mentor. If you join too many clubs, they'll help you assess your goals and create an extracurricular plan. Regardless of kind of your, your approach to your student experience, it's good to know that you're supported and your student life advisor is there for you throughout this entire experience to help you have a really great community, um, to, to really connect you with everyone um, and really make you feel like a welcome part of the, the Wharton MBA community. So we can't talk about Wharton without you know, talking about its home, which is Philadelphia. Um, Philly is actually the kind of city where you feel like a local after your first week. Um, it's, it's a walkable, affordable, big enough, but not too big city that's, that's rich in culture and diversity. Uh, if you're a history or a foodie, a history buff or a foodie, you know, you're really in for a, a great treat. 
Um, you know, we can all kind of, everyone who's at Wharton and, and is from Philly, you know, we could wax on about it for hours, but I just want to talk with you about where Wharton is located in the city and how our students make this place their home for two years. Um, so Wharton's home is in the university city section of Philadelphia. It's a large neighborhood where four other universities are located. Um, and the majority of our students choose to live in Center City, which is the main hub of restaurants, shopping, and, and some beautiful green parks. Um, the commute from Center City to University City is about 20 minutes by foot, uh, 15 minutes by public transport, or 10 minutes by bike. Uh, since our students tend to live in a neighborhood together, the commute to campus is never done alone. It's a great way to really catch up with friends. Um, additionally, halfway along the commute, you'll find our Student Life Center called 2401. Um, 2401, it's an MBA-only student space with conference rooms, study areas, and large event space. It's where actually a lot of our MBAs spend their Fridays, since we don't offer classes on Fridays. A lot of our students will congregate there. So now that we've talked about the main components of the MBA program, I want to dive a little bit into why Wharton is not only a smart investment, but also a smart investment in yourself. So Pursuing a grad degree might seem like a big investment right now, but the return of a Wharton MBA really pays dividends for the rest of your life. While you're at Wharton for those two years, you're going to grow exponentially. You're going to meet people who will be your friends for life, and, and really the diversity of thought and background of your classmates will expand your worldview. Um, it's important to know that the resources available to our alumni will provide opportunities to learn long after you finish your MBA. So even though you're only a Wharton student for two years, you have those resources for life. Uh, the Wharton Network consists at, sits at about 98,000 living alums, of which about 50% of them are in VP and C-suite roles. So certainly people that are great to network with. Um, this kind of network provides strong connections. And, and Wharton's alum, Wharton alums always, as they, as they often say, take the call. Um, our, our alums are involved for the rest of their lives. And it's really something that's, that's a, a trademark of the Wharton community. So thinking about your return. So before... Um, before um, people think about an MBA program, certainly they, they want to think about outcomes, right? I think it's important. Maybe you're thinking about, you know, using an MBA to pivot into a new industry, maybe to gain skills to lead teams, or maybe an entirely different, you know, organization. So we know why people come to B school, but, you know, the MBA will give you a solid foundation to, to build a successful career, especially at Wharton. Um, but it is important to think about, uh, you know, post-MBA post-MBA outcomes. Um, so the data that you're looking at now covers eight industries that most of our current graduating class went into, as well as the median salary, not inclusive of bonuses. You know, thinking about this as a, as a long-term investment, post-MBA, you'll still have about 30 to 40 years in the workforce. So imagine the growth that these numbers could see given time and lifelong Wharton resources at your disposal, okay? But this gives you a really good idea of kind of how our students land post-graduation. So how do you get here? Um, it all starts with the application process. I'm gonna walk you through the components of the application and, and really give you some insider tips on how to prepare a strong application, all right? So um, good thing to know, we have three different rounds every year. Um, just one second. So the application timeline, again, so we have three rounds. And, and even though, um, you know, these are specific dates for this year, you can keep in mind that uh, the dates will be fairly similar. I will say um, for round three, for those of you who are thinking of applying, we did extend the deadline to April 15th. Generally speaking, that, that deadline is around April 1st. But because with everything going on and we want to make sure students or applicants rather have enough time to complete their applications, we did extend that round to April 15th. If you're someone applying to the Advanced Access or MOLIS programs for, the, for college seniors, um, that deadline is May 27th. Uh, but for those of you who are applying to the regular MBA program for round three, April 15th is your deadline. So a little bit about our application timeline. Um, you submit your application. Um, the committee reads and reviews applications. Then we send out invitations for interviews. Interviews are scheduled to be completed. Then we come back as a committee and we make decisions. And then decisions are released. It's a pretty straightforward admissions process that I'll walk through a little bit more specifically in the next couple of slides. So a little bit about our admissions philosophy at the Wharton School. Like since you're here, I wanna kind of give you a peek behind the curtain on our philosophy. Uh, as a team, we take this role very seriously and we understand that we're making decisions that can impact people's lives. And so for that reason, our first philosophy is that we practice holistic admissions. 
Every piece of your application goes into making a decision. It's not just one or two pieces. A lot of times individuals think that our entire decision rests on the GMAT or GRE score and the, the undergraduate GPA, and that's just not true. You'd be shocked to see how deeply we go into your letters of recommendation just to find out exactly who you are within your organization. So we're really employing a process that allows us to take into consideration every single component of your application. Um, our next kind of core tenet to our philosophy is that we read to admit. Uh, we're in the admissions business. We're, on, we're not in the denial business. That would be a very depressing job. Uh, when we're reading your application, our goal is to find reasons to admit you, not to deny you. So really, it's incumbent upon applicants to make sure that every single component is as strong as possible because we're really going to be trying to pull wherever we can. Again, it's the read to admit model. We train our application readers to tune out bias and noise. Uh, that really allows us to help increase fairness and accuracy. It's a very important way to ensure that we're bringing in a balanced class every year. Um, lastly, we want to reassure that everyone, we want to reassure everyone that, you know, every single applicant is given a fair and equal shot at being admitted. All right. Um, for us, it's very important to know that every single application is reviewed individually without seeing the other reads. You get at least two application reviews, right? And there's not one single admissions component that, you know, determines admissibility. That's really um, something that, that uh, I would say produces a class that's generally homogenized. So we're really looking at your whole application. Okay, so if you're nervous to hit the submit button because you know you think you're not good enough, or your scores aren't high enough, or your undergrad institution isn't prestigious enough, remember our philosophy. Everything that we do kind of combats that. You know, we're trying to pull out strengths wherever possible. Okay, so we it's important to know we use a read to admit model. So make sure that every component of your application is as strong as you can make it. So your application. Um, a couple of building blocks, you know, you have your background and biographical info, your extracurricular and community involvement, academics and testing, professional experience and resume, essays and recommendations. Um, so good thing to know, a lot of times people are a little bit nervous about um, kind of extracurriculars, just because, you know, if you're a working professional, you don't necessarily have a lot of time to be engaged in the community in that way. But we encourage applicants to list college and post-college extracurriculars. Don't be stressed if you don't have a robust extracurricular profile. We understand that you're working professionals and some of you might have families on top of that. You know, we're trying to see what you're passionate about and how you contribute to those passions, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and, and dive into um, kind of the, uh, the different building blocks and give you some pointers, right? Um, so let's start with academics and testing. We're trying to address some pieces of the puzzle regarding your academic preparedness for the Wharton MBA, right? When we're reviewing this section of your application, the admissions committee is asking ourselves, you know, can you handle the academic rigor of the Wharton MBA curriculum? And so we're going to be looking for evidence of this in one of three places, your transcripts, your GMAT and GRE testing, and your work experience. If you've had some missteps in your undergrad transcript, we're going to look at other parts of your application to see if you show strong mastery of those subjects in other areas like testing or work experience. So, you know, even if you, for example, started off a bit rocky in your undergrad career, like a lot of people do, that's okay. We're going to be looking at other areas of your application to see where you where you improved, where you got those skills, either professionally or through testing. As for the GMAT or the GRE, we don't have a preference for one testing over the other. We're truly agnostic about it. Our best advice is for you to take the test you feel most comfortable with. If you haven't looked at the exams yet, I strongly encourage you to take a look at some practice tests, see which one you feel more comfortable with. That's the exam you should take because we truly don't have a preference. Um, so looking at your professional experience and your resume, um, you know, not all resumes are created equal, you know, as you're writing yours, think about who's going to be reading it, write the resume so that anyone outside of your industry can understand your role and responsibilities um, and avoid industry jargon. We really don't want to get mired down in that because you can't necessarily assume that the person reading your resume is going to be ex an expert in your industry, right? Um, it's also important for you to quantify your accomplishments. Hard numbers really illustrate the impact of your work. Um, some other tip, some other pointers for you, make sure it's one page. Get your resume down to one page. That's all we're really looking for. Um, and make sure you're fleshing out your responsibilities as much as possible. We want to see incremental growth from you. And the best way to do that is through your resume, okay? Uh, most of you already have a, a, a resume that is similar to what we're looking for. Um, you're gonna just have to tweak it a little bit to make sure that you're, you're adhering to what, we're, what we need, okay? Um, essays. Um, so the essays are pretty straightforward, frankly. Um, you don't have a huge amount of space. We do have word limits for it, but we do understand that uh, these are really the most organic part of your application and that you're going to be taking a lot of time with it. 
So looking at essay one, really, we're asking you, what do you hope to gain professionally from the Wharton MBA? Not out here to trick you. We're looking just for some very clearly delineated structure here that, that answers a couple of questions for us. So we find that when people follow uh, kind of a three-piece structure, they tend to be the most successful. So they take the first part, which is the background. You know, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing at work. Then they give us the setup. This is what I've learned in my career so far. And then they have their pivot point, right? I realize I don't know X, so I need to gain skills in X in order to reach Y goal, right? So really, we're just looking to see what you're hoping to do with the Wharton MBA. Um, and using, I think, you know, the background, the setup, and the pivot point, that really allows people to, to put forward essays that allow us to understand, you know, what they hope to gain from the Wharton MBA, and more importantly, can we help them get there? We would never want to admit anyone whose career map wouldn't allow them to accomplish their goals when they leave the Wharton School, right? Um, it's also important to make sure that your, your essay is well structured, you know, there's a clear beginning, middle, and end, that it's well written, um, and that, that you're, you're putting forward your best, uh, your best example of writing. Um, really, we need to see that you're capable of writing at the graduate level. Um, but just remember, you have word limits, so clarity and concision are going to be your best friends, all right? Just make sure you have very clear, long and short-term goals articulated. That's very helpful as well. Uh, we just need to see if we can place you. Um, the second essay question requires you to talk a little bit more about your community. You know, what are some things that you hope to to gain from and contribute to the Wharton community? Um, you're asked to share a, um, an anecdote um, that the admissions committee may not know otherwise. Um, this is a really great opportunity for you to, um, I think, share part of yourself that we can't glean from other from other components, right? Um, and then you use that example about yourself to connect to the Wharton community. Here we're looking to see what you would hope to add to the Wharton community and how you would like to be involved. As a general matter, we like to bring in people who are, are proportionally more givers than takers to the community. Um, so, you know, what's gonna be your specific value add? What's gonna be your imprint on the Wharton community? Um, what are some clubs you hope to join? That's a great way to go about it too. But again, our essays are not out to trick you. They're very straightforward. Make sure you have a clear beginning, middle and end, and that you're answering the questions clearly. That's all we're really looking for. I strongly encourage you to think about really um, selecting people that you can trust to look at your drafts. That way you can allow people to, um, that way you can allow people to take a, a look at your essays to make sure you're answering the questions. You might want to give them some guiding questions like, you know, are my, is my motivation clear? Is it, is it clear why I want to be at, at in an MBA program? And more importantly, why I want to be at work, right? Those things are going to prove vital for you, okay? My final piece of advice with the essays, don't overthink it. You're all at the point in your lives where you know how to write a structured essay. This should not give you any, any reason to drop anchor in a headspace where, where you can't write an essay. You all know how to do it. Just make sure you map it out. Make sure you give it to other people to look over. Um, and just make sure you're putting your, your best foot forward. That's all we're really asking you to do. No trick questions here. Um, the letters of recommendation, you know, a lot of times people wonder, who should I ask? Select who knows you best, right? A lot of times people think that, you know, we want the CEO of your company to provide a letter of recommendation. Not always the case. You know, does the CEO know you well? That's really what we're wondering. We're looking for quality relationship. Um, you know, so really think about who knows you well. We would rather have someone who is your direct supervisor than someone who is in the C-suite if they don't know you well, right? So just make sure you can pick someone who can speak um, in terms of high quality about you. You know, we love a good story. If your recommender can, can recall a story about you, it helps paint a picture of what kind of employee you are, right? Um, so really pick people that you trust. I strongly encourage you to make sure that you, you know, invite them to coffee or at this point, um, you know, maybe not to coffee, maybe have a good Zoom chat with them, but um, really think about, you know, what your motivations are and, and, you know, give them your resume and talk about why you're applying to this program. That way they can structure your recommendation in terms of your goals, your performance and things like that. They can really tailor it to the Wharton questions. Um, we understand that there are, are reasons why you might not feel comfortable asking your current supervisor for a letter of recommendation. You know, this might be you don't want your boss to know that you're planning to leave, you don't want to jeopardize a bonus, um, or you might be new to your manager or a role. That's totally fine. We, we fully understand that. If this is the case, um, go ahead and consider getting a letter of recommendation from a previous supervisor or another person who knows you really well. Uh, be sure to include a note as to, uh, as to why you didn't ask your current supervisor in the optional essay. So we do allow you to include an optional essay, which is our third essay. Again, it's optional. For those of you who are reapplicants to the Wharton School, um, and it's important to know that we do have a fair amount of reapplicants who are admitted every year, um, use the optional essay uh, to, to articulate to the admissions committee 
um, kind of changes you've made in your application or any growth you've experienced over the last uh, time since you've applied. Um, other ways to use the the optional essay include, you know, in letting us know why you didn't ask your current supervisor, why you didn't, you know, get a letter of recommendation from them. You know, perhaps you want to explain another anomaly. Maybe your testing isn't indicative of of your your talent, or maybe you know your grades were a little bit rocky at the start of college because you were pre-med and then organic chemistry told you you weren't anymore, right? I think it's important to to really let us know so we have a full texture and a full understanding of what your application is about, right? I think that's very important for us. So the the optional essay doesn't necessarily have to be in a structured essay format. It can be bullet points. Really, however you want to convey it to us, that's perfectly fine. So the interview. So after we're done reviewing your application based on the components that I just talked about, um, we select for interviews. Um, our interview process is pretty unique to Wharton. There's two components, the team-based discussion and a one-on-one -on -one interview. The TBD is a really good discussion or opportunity for you to interact with fellow applicants in a really lively and thoughtful discussion. Um, the discussion does have a prompt and a purpose. And as a team, you're going to be evaluated on the process that you take toward achieving that outcome, right? So we like the TBD as part of your interview because it displays how you approach and think about a challenge in a team setting, something that we really find to be important at the Wharton School. It gives you a, a firsthand experience as to the team-based dynamic that is central to the Wharton MBA experience. Um, frankly, there's not a lot of preparation needed for the TBD. Our best advice is to be yourself. You know, what kind of traits do you prefer in a collaborative team member? Be that person. Um, I often like to remind our, our candidates that you do this every day at work. You know, you work in groups and teams every single day. You solve problems all of the time. This is no different. Um, so following your TBG, you're going to meet briefly with a, for a one-on-one -on -one interview with an admissions team member or one of our student fellows. Um, you're going to answer questions about your interest in Wharton and be given the opportunity to ask questions you, you still might have about the student experience. Um, again, neither of these, these components are out to trick you. Um, these are just great ways for us to get to know you a little bit better and to allow you to see kind of what the team environment is like at Wharton. Um, good to keep in mind, the, the team-based discussion is not a make or break component. Um, that is to say, if someone has a less than solid team-based discussion, that, that doesn't mean that they, they still can't be admitted. They can certainly still be admitted. It just becomes one component of your application, okay? Uh, just a couple of application pro tips, all right? Um, we, these are just some things that, that the admissions committee really um, likes to, to hit home for our candidates who are, are going to be preparing their applications. Um, so don't make us guess, okay? Um, anything that you might, uh, that might come across as unclear or red flag or anything that just might be a little bit anomalous, let us know about it. Share more than you think that, that you might need to. Uh, we really want to have a firm understanding of who you are as an entire person. Remember, for all intents and purposes, you are a PDF on our screens. You need to pop off and humanize yourself a little bit. So don't make us guess about anything. Make sure we have a full picture of who you are. Remember, you're applying to business school, not a job. Make sure you're looking at the application very carefully, just so you can really determine the best approach for yourself. It's really vital for you to ensure that um, really what you're doing is is putting together an application that, that we're going to get a full understanding of you. Again, this is for business school, not a job. Your resume equals your skills roadmap. Like I said before, we're looking to see your trajectory and how you've gained skills uh, incrementally over your career. We want to see what you've gained, you know, in terms of quantitative, teamwork, et cetera. You know, what are your, your, what are your gains in terms of both EQ and IQ development? So use your resume to kind of give us a roadmap of what skills you've gained. That'll allow us to see what you'll bring to the classroom. And, and with an MBA from the Wharton School, what will you bring to your professional career post-MBA? Finally, tell us your story. Craft us a narrative. It's really important for us to understand you as a human person. You know, you've taken the time to put together this application, so make sure that it's cohesive. Make sure it all comes together. You really want to ensure that we understand you collectively, not just in a, in a disjointed group of, of application materials. Again, I strongly encourage you to select people that you trust completely to look over your application material. Ask them directly, you know, do you get my narrative? Do you get my story? Is my motivation clear? It's going to really allow you to kind of, first and foremost, step away from your application because you've probably just spent so much time on it, but also it allows someone from a, from a different perspective to say, maybe you should consider this, or, you know, this is coming across one way when I think you mean this. Um, so I think it's important to give it to other people to look at. Maybe make sure you select people you trust and who will give you 
clear, honest advice. So we want you to stay connected. As, as I wrap up here, I, I, I want to give you some ways to stay connected with us while you research MBA programs or as you begin to prepare your application. Um, our website is the, the best source of up-to-date info, especially right now as we're navigating kind of the new normal at the moment. Um, so make sure that you look at our website. You can also opt in to receive emails from us. It's a great way to stay connected. Um, follow us on Instagram. We post deadline reminders, event information, and stories about a lot of our students. It's a really, really wonderful way to learn about, um, about Wharton students. It's, it's just a really fantastic way to get um, more of a, of a textured understanding um, of what the, the Wharton student experience is like. Um, lastly, our admissions fellows are a group of 55 students to get it dedicated to connecting with prospective students like yourselves. Um, you know, we have a page on our website with bios on each student, um, and really we encourage you to connect with them to get a student perspective about, about Wharton and to really answer your question. Um, they're our front line of defense. They're fantastic. They're going through it. Um, I think it's really important to, um, to understand that, that, again, Wharton is a very student-centered place, so we really want to make sure that, that our students are at the front of that, okay? All right, so now is the point where I'm gonna be looking at some of your questions. Uh, let me just pull them over to my other screen here. All right, so, um, and thank you again for tuning in. Uh, it's a really solid group today. I'm really glad you could join us again. Thanks so much. All right, so, um, so someone says, or someone's wondering, how does Wharton view GRE scores? Do you use the ETS converter to compare GRE versus GMAT scores? Um, so we look at GRE scores independently of the GMAT. We're really looking to see what your percentiles are, um, just because it's not an it's not an apples to oranges comparison. You know, if we are a little bit unsure, we we can use the ETS converter, um, but mainly we're looking at your percentiles. Um, that's really just what the best way for us to go. Um, let's see here. Trying. Sorry, the let me see here. All right. Does Warden offer an entrepreneurship major? Yes, we do. We do offer an entrepreneurship major. Um, that is something that is very important um, to remember. Um, and also those opportunities are, are um, the opportunities I talked about in terms of entrepreneurship are available not only to our entrepreneurship major, but also to all of our students as well. Um, how is uh, how is COVID-19 affecting the round one applications for fall 21 entry? Um, that's an excellent question, one that's certainly timely. Um, right now, we're still planning to proceed as normal. Uh, we really don't have um, any reason not to. Um, we're incredibly hopeful that, um, you know, as as we as a as a as a world develop the way that we cope with COVID-19 and, and everything that will happen in the aftermath, um, we are hopeful that in fall 21 we're able to resume as normal. Um, but we'll just have to see as it goes. We don't have anything set in stone yet. So for now, we're planning to, to move this forward. Okay, let's see here. Just getting some other questions. A lot of these are about, um, a lot of these are about the current, uh, the current, um, the current world right now. Mm -hmm. um, some of these are very personal questions, so I'm not going to be answering them. So if you have questions, certainly email us. All of our contact information is on the website. Okay, let's see. Ah, I would like to confirm that round three applicants can submit their applications without GMAT or GRE scores, but we will be required to submit the score only before the program will start. That is correct. Um, students who are applying for this year's round three are eligible to submit their applications and be reviewed without a GMAT or a GRE score. If they are offered admission, then before they matriculate in August, they will be required to submit scores. Um, will the schools be offering conditional acceptances pending a minimum score? We are not going to have a minimum score. Um, again, we don't have a minimum score for any of our other required um, our other rounds, um, so we wouldn't have that for, for this round either, even in light of the, the adjusted testing for this round. Um, let's see. For round one applications, would Wharton consider having the TBD uh, be virtual due to the very many uncertainties with travel restrictions? Great question. So for round two this year, most of our, our TBDs were done virtually. Um, we're fully prepared and ready to do virtual TBD, so that's certainly something that we're able to accommodate. Um, even for round three, 
Um, we're really excited to make sure that we can continue to accommodate our candidates from all over the world. So we will be implementing uh, virtual TBDs for round three. Um, so this is something that we're fully capable of doing. Excellent question. Um, let's see. Do you require earnings information in the application process as part of the background information? Um, it's it's helpful, but it's not required. It's it's really up to you. Um, you don't have to include that if you don't want to. Um, let's see. Um, I'm planning to apply in the first round of 2021. Should I create an account now and start the application? I would recommend until we do our update. Um, I would recommend uh, we do our update every April and then we release our new application usually early in the summer. Um, so I would wait until the summer to actually start filling out the application. Um, and as far as the essay topics, this person also asked if the essay topics for the next academic year or the next admission cycle will remain the same. We don't know. Um, usually they do stay relatively similar, but um, we, we open ourselves to the opportunity to um, change the questions as we see fit. Um, so um, we don't know yet. Um, it is possible that they will change. So so certainly, um, you know, stay tuned. Um, let's see, should we use the optional essay to talk about diversity? Um, if you want to, certainly you're more than welcome to. And diversity is defined in myriad ways. That's really that's really um, something that uh, is, is up to a candidate. It's a very personal thing. Um, so if you want to have a, a, a diversity statement as your third essay or your optional essay, Please feel free. That's perfectly fine. Um, does Wharton provide part-time MBA programs? No, no, we um, we do not provide a part-time program. The Wharton MBA program is a two-year full-time program uh, that is on campus only. Um, if someone applied round two in this current cycle and did not gain admission, would it be too soon to reapply in round one of the following admission cycle? You're more than welcome to, if you applied in a, in a cycle this year, you're more than welcome to apply um, in, in round one of next year. Just make sure that you're taking some time over the summer to think about kind of how your first application is different from your new one. You know, where what are some growth points? You know, what did you do differently in terms of work? Maybe you've had some new projects. Maybe you were promoted. Make sure we understand what the differences are in your application. Let's see here. Can you share how Wharton includes spouses? Absolutely. So families and partners are such a uh, such a, a normalized part of the social fabric at the Wharton School. So many of our, our students come with, with couples and, and or with partners and families, and we have a partners club. We have just really great ways to involve them in every single aspect of Wharton's social life. Um, it's such a normalized thing here that, that um, for us, it's, it's just part of the, an everyday thing. Um, so yeah, your couples are welcome. Um, there are there are uh, resources for them as well, just because they're members of the Penn community. They're welcome to use career management. They're welcome to use on-campus resources. Um, and often, a lot of our students will joke that um, their partners become better friends with their classmates than they do. Um, so it's it's really wonderful how our partners and families are woven into the experience at the Warden School. Um, someone asked, is April 6th the deadline for recommenders? Um, that was originally our plan, but um, in the, with the new update um, for the April 15th deadline, that has been extended. So the, the recommendation deadline has been extended to the 15th as well. Um, someone is wondering about non-Wharton classes. So, um, so uh, people take classes outside of the Wharton School. Um, yes, are these classes in another Penn graduate program or undergraduate college? Um, these are not at the undergraduate level. These have to be graduate classes. And these are at other Penn graduate schools. It could be the School of Arts and Sciences, Engineering, Design, Law, et cetera. Um, the only restrictions are whether or not the, the class has space. And that's, that's per the professor at that specific school at the Wharton School. Um, the only scheduling hurdles to account for are, you know, do you have any, any core classes left that you have to take? Do we have any age restrictions? Um, no. We don't. Um, generally speaking, most of our candidates have anywhere from four plus four years of work experience, but we do have younger students as well. We also have older students who have, you know, 20 years of work experience. Um, so really, we don't have any any age limiters for that. Um, is the EMBA curriculum similar to the MBA curriculum? I would say somewhat, but it, the structure is a little bit different. If you're interested in the EMBA, the executive MBA, certainly look at their curriculum just to see what the differences are there. I can't speak super fluently about that just because we don't we don't know. Um, what changes do you anticipate with the new dean? Um, we're very excited. Uh, we have our, our brand new dean uh, joining us in the fall. Actually, she'll be joining us in July. And frankly, we don't know. Um, we're just really excited to have her on board. Um, it's it's going to be great to get some 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 different leadership in and just see how she can take the 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 Wharton School into the next phase. We're really excited to have her.
Um, I had some technical difficulties at the beginning. Sure. Um, so um, if you missed who I was at the beginning, my name is Jeb Butler. I'm director of operations, and I also serve on the admissions committee at the Wharton School. I have only have another minute or so, so I'm trying to get, um, let's see here. Um, while recruiting for internships and subsequently full-time jobs, how valuable is it to have a U.S. work authorization? Um, our students who are foreign, generally speaking, do not have any trouble getting U.S. full-time work. So um, I would say it's it's um, you don't necessarily have to have a U.S. work authorization. All right, let's see. Let's see. Just trying to make sure I'm getting as many questions as possible. Um, can you give some tips for a couple who is applying together? Um, make sure you're going to be evaluated differently um, and completely separately. And, and the fact that you're a couple will, will really have no, will now have no weight on, on the other's application. We do give you a spot to put that down. It is helpful um, just so kind of we have a full picture of your entire life, because as I said before, spouses and partners and families are very important at the Wharton School. Um, but do keep in mind that it will have no, um, it will have no, um, it will have no bearing on your application decision. Um, another question, GMAC is rolling out an at-home version of the test because of COVID-19. However, the test won't include the AWA. Will this impact an applicant in a negative way? Absolutely not. Um, really, that is, is beyond the scope of a candidate's concern, so that would not be used against them. Let's see here. All right, and find one more question. Um, does Wharton have any partner schools that we can take courses from, either internationally or domestically? Yes, we do have a um, we do have a, a program that allows our students to study abroad at INSEAD, either at the France campus or at the Singapore campus. Some of our, st our students do take advantage of that opportunity, and it's a really great way again to to globalize their experience at the Wharton School. Great question. Um, so that's all the time I have for today, folks. Um, certainly, please feel free to use us as your resource. Um, another way that you can get these questions answered is to participate in our conversations program that allows you to speak one-on-one -on -one with some admissions advisors. That's on our website to so take a look at our conversations program. It's a it's a one-on-one -on -one program that's really vital. Um, reach out to us via email, on social media, really any way that we can help you, we're happy to do what we can. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, and if you need anything, let us know. We're here for you, especially as as we're all going through this it's kind of strange time together. Um, but you know, we're really excited um, to to see your application in the future. Um, but otherwise, let us know if you need anything. All right, take care, be healthy, be well, and uh, we look forward to getting your application. Have a good day, everyone.